I consider myself a cinematographer, but I do have to fill a lot of different roles in independent film. You really have to be a jack of all trades and you have to know as much about every little part of the process as you can, but I would definitely consider myself mostly a cinematographer. I've been interested in film since the first time I watched LeVar Burden on Reading Rainbow go behind the scenes on Star Trek. And I was, I was like, people make these things that I see on TV? And there was another episode of where Mr. Rogers flipped the camera around backwards and showed this, what was behind the set. Guess what? Mr. Rogers doesn't live in a real house in a tiny little village. He's, it's a set, you know? And I thought, wow, this is, this is something I want to be a part of. I didn't instantly want to be involved in film. Uh, when, when I first started making little movies, I was just shooting things with my video camera, and I really didn't have any concept of composition or what I was doing. Everything was, and I, if I wasn't editing especially, it was just you shoot everything in order. And so it's really not, it's totally different from filmmaking where you're like meticulously crafting something from start to finish. And in a way, not, well some filmmakers would do it the way that I shot as a, as a kid, but do a better job of it. Um, but sometimes I, sometimes I wish I could shoot the way, sometimes I wish I could do what I was doing as a kid, and I wonder if that's where my passion started. But I kind of like, I just, I love thinking about it, so oh, I love overthinking it, you know. So that's become the way that I do it. But I, wouldn't, I would say that I was always interested in making something to show other people, but it became a deeper, more meaningful interest as I became an older, deep, deeper, more meaningful uh, thinker. It, my family has always been extremely supportive, which has been really helpful for me because I said, I want a camera, and they got me one. And I said, I want to make movies, and they said, okay, go for it, you know. My family are the people who pat me on the back and, and say, we're so proud of you, even if it sucks, you know. They'll still tell you they're proud of you. You find other people to tell you what's wrong with it, and that's very important, but your family's got your, your back, they've got your morale, you know, and they'll say, you used to be really sucky, so we're so proud of you now. The first thing that I remember filming was, uh, I think every I think every kid that picks up a video camera does this tour around the house kind of thing, and I did one of those, and uh, I'm really glad that I did because it's like in a way it's a point of view documentary film, and it's the most it's the most it's the it's probably the best representation of of that moment of my life that I could get my hands on if I if I wanted to I can sit down and watch that. And uh, that has gained more importance to me than it ever had before. Um, but the first thing I remember, the first thing I ever remember filming was a little tour around my house in the backyard. Oh, and I discover all the features of the camera in the process. So I'm like, look, there's a zoom. Look, there's a whoa, and it fades out. You know, there's letterboxing, and the time is flashing in the corner. I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I did that. <laughs> I had, I've been, I shot things my whole, my whole life growing up. And in middle school, my friend and I, I just got my editing software, and my friend and I decided that we were going to make videos. And we made like four in a week, which was, I think, is still a record for me because um, does four, I'm say four that are like surprisingly good considering that they were rushed so, so much. But um, we collaborated on the ideas, you know, and we came up with these little scripts and shot them and edited them. Uh, shot and edited them all in a, in a week. At which point that I had confessed to my parents that I come out of the closet and say, I, I might, I think I'm an artist. What point was that? When I was in, uh, I think my parents, I feel like my parents always knew, you know? It was a given. My dad, my dad's a, a has been a photojournalist uh, since before I was born. And so I've been surrounded by cameras. My dad was always shooting pictures and like, and, and uh, of course, the rest of my family were uh, very artistically inclined, and a lot of them make a living uh, selling their, doing the art and selling their art. And so to, to do pictures like my dad, but to, to do them in motion was just the logical next step. So I don't think that, I didn't really have that moment with my parents where I said, this is what I want to do. When I, just, when I was ready to go to college, though, my mom said, uh, we were looking at a lot of 
very expensive schools to go to. And my mom said, um, well, one in particular was not accredited, you know, and this, these kind of issues came up. And we were both uh, wide-eyed when we toured these facilities. But my mom said, you know, you're 17, let's go, let's go to a four-year institution, let's get a regular degree first. And so I, I, I ended up uh, staying in town and saving a lot of money which I've later blown on film projects, but I saved a lot of money going to a, getting a, getting a regular four-year bachelor's degree first. So there was kind of that moment where I said, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to go all in with this. And my parents were like, why don't we make some small bets first? And I, and at, you know, at the time I was a little reluctant, but, uh, but I, I, it's one of the best decisions that they ever urged me to, to make. I wanted to run, run off, run away and go to film school. It's hard to run away and go to film school because it costs you uh, what it would cost you to run away and buy a house. So I personally didn't go to film school first and I, and I haven't gone to film school yet. And I don't know at what point in my life I may go to film school, but it's very much a financially based thing. However, I have never regretted so far the decision not to go to film school because if I had gone, I realized after I finished a four-year degree at a, uh, at a, at a regular four-year institution that if I had gone to film school before, I would have been completely overwhelmed. So in the time that I did not go to film school, what did I accomplish instead of getting a, a bachelor's in film production? Uh, I, made a, I made several short, fil short form projects. I quadrupled my vocabulary of film terms because I didn't know any of the foreign ones. I didn't know any of the French words about film when I, even, when I came to, to college. And if you don't know any French words about film, you haven't taken a film class yet. So I, uh, I, learned, I learned, I studied film. I took a lot of film studies courses where I wasn't making things, but I was watching things. That's been the biggest difference for me. And then I made a 50-minute uh, a uh, student film, which was an over, just a, a really large project to undertake over the course of like a couple of months when you've never done anything that long before. Um, so I, but I absolutely do not regret not going to film school um, before embarking on the projects I've, I've been on. I also, I've also had the privilege of, of getting a job that allows me to work with multimedia and so every day I, I learn something new about a camera or a program, an editing program that I didn't know before. So a lot of, a lot of I'm a lot of self-taught. If I went to a film school now, the challenge I would have is there's a little bit of stuff I would already know, but I still know I would learn like tons of stuff if I went to, to film school. I would never tell somebody never to go to film school. I wouldn't ever say never go to film school. I would not say that. I would say wait until film school can teach you what you don't know already. See what you can learn for yourself first. Uh, see what you can f watch movies. Learn from, let the other, let films teach you and let your own personal experiences teach you. Then let film school tell you how to refine it and market it. But it is true that New York and LA are like the mecca of um, multimedia, filmmaking, broadcast, whatever, in our country. However, um, I would love to go to those places and work. I would love to go find opportunity in those places. But it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, college, it's kind of like college, think like college sports versus professional sports, I think. Uh, you can go out and you can play the big leagues for high stakes. You, you get a lot of money, you spend a lot of money, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, on a, you're on a team of people that maybe you didn't choose to be on, but they're paying you the right amount of whatever. It's a, it's a high stakes game. It's a high stakes version of what we're doing. And, and independent filmmaking is uh, the, the same people who criticize, I think the same kind of logic that, that criticizes pro football players criticizes the Hollywood movie makers. So like the independent guys, man, they're doing it because they love the game, you know, they're doing it because they love the sport. And that's totally true. And that doesn't mean that those other people don't love it. But it means there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with, uh, with playing the game because you love it. Uh, making films because you want to make films and seeing what you can do with your resources. They become, as a result, two totally different games. The fans are different. The, the experience is different, the team is different. Independent filmmaking is fun. You're probably not gonna get rich doing it. 
um, but it's a lot of fun. But I hope, I hope that it leads me into some industry where I can get paid more to have just as much fun. But from my experience, you, you, generally, have to, you generally have to sacrifice one for the other a little bit. I'm just trying to find that perfect balance. So the benefits of staying local are um, you're, you have more control over your film than you ever will have again in your life. This is the only time that you can make your film is when you're an independent filmmaker. Uh, even if you work in Hollywood and somebody gives you a vacation, which I don't think happens very often uh, if you want to survive. Even if you get a vacation, you, make, you, can, you can make your own film, but that's independent filmmaking. Just because you're a professional doesn't mean you can't be an independent filmmaker. Just because you're a, a, a dad and you're a manager of a bank doesn't mean that you can't be an independent filmmaker. So independent filmmaking is about using the resources that you have. It's very DIY, I think. Um, it's about having the fun, learning, and you're providing, don't knock yourself and don't try to make a Hollywood movie. You're an independent filmmaker. Embrace it and make something that no one has ever seen before. Independent, that's, the, that's the advantage of independent filmmaking. It's uh, your voice. Independent filmmakers in this, in this area hesitate to network with other independent filmmakers in this area. Um, is it an ego thing? I don't know. Um, but independent filmmakers don't always network with each other. And they don't always network with the institutions around them that could help them network or help them get their projects off the ground. I think that they're all really confident. And they all have that drive that makes independent filmmaking what it is, which is do it yourself. You know, like, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make this movie and nobody's going to stop me and I don't need anybody's help. But that's not the right, that's not the right way to do it. Luckily, if you're an independent filmmaker in this area and you admit that you need help from other people and you admit that you need to collaborate with other people in the area, there are just, there's an excess of resources in, in the upstate for independent filmmakers. There's a lot of other independent filmmakers and there's a lot of talent because you need cast, you need crew. There's tons of people in the upstate who are excited, who want to work on a project and they want to work on a project with somebody else who is talented, excited, and has a great idea. If you reach out to the people in your community, wherever your community is, but especially from, I have experience in the upstate, so if you're, if you're around, if you ask people, you say, this is what we're doing, it's going to be awesome, who wants to help? Everybody will jump on board. There are so many enthusiastic people in this area to help you cast, crew. People will come out and I'll be like, I'm sorry, uh, all we have that you could do is hold this boom pole and they're like, yes! You know, they're like so excited to hold that boom pole for you. And, um, and it's awesome because they're all, lear everybody's learning. Everybody's learning something practical and, and everybody, it comes back to that independent film versus, versus corporate Hollywood film kind of, kind of uh, issue, which is that everybody is doing it because they want to see the film succeed and they want to have a good time doing it. Honestly, I think that expanding the local film scene uh, starts with tying the local film scene together and, and making it clear that, like, is there a local film scene? Everybody goes, what local film scene? That's not good. We don't need people to say, what local film scene? We need people to say, like, I want to be a part of that local film scene in Spartanburg or in Greenville or in the upstate. And uh, I think it's about bringing together this local film scene. And honestly, the Hubbub Expecting Goodness Film Festival is I don't want this to sound like a plug, but honestly, the the um, the hubbub expecting goodness film festival is one of the few things in Spartanburg that has happened in the past few years that I'm aware of that has actually said we know you're out there hiding filmmakers. Come in, make some movies. We're gonna put you all in a room together to watch the movies when we're done. You're gonna meet people. You're gonna network with people. Um, don't be afraid. Come out and meet other filmmakers. A community project like the Expecting Goodness Film Festival, bringing people together to make films, bringing people together to watch the films, talk about the films, and say like, hey, I noticed that you did this. How did you do that? That was really neat. Or maybe next time you do this, you should try this technique. You know, um, Then we go for expansion. Right now, we're working on uh, uh, a feature length project called Bone to the Dog. I'm working on Bone to the Dog with uh, co-writer, co-director, Henry Mulder, and uh, he's a very close colleague and friend of mine. And the story, which is his original concept, is about a hitman who has fallen on hard economic times like the rest of us. 
and his best friend is a cannibal who only eats men that are abusive to women. So he's a very picky, he's a picky eater, a cannibal who's a picky eater. That's the kind of thing that Henry comes up with, these weird sort of characters. And uh, whenever he pitches one of these stories to me, I'm like, yes, let's do this, because uh, I've never seen a movie with a cannibal who's that picky. The, the hitman, um, much to his chagrin, to get back on top, he has to kidnap the beloved pet poodle of their local mayor. And to top it all off, he really doesn't care for dogs very much. So he has to kidnap this poodle. And um, that is, as they say, the hilarity ensues, I hope. So, um, so the film's about some pretty, some pretty quirky characters, some pretty quirky circumstances. And it's a little dark, it's a little funny, and it's a little suspenseful. Uh, I, I would like to think that when we're done, we have a product, that, a final product that we're proud enough of that we can kind of circle it around, show it to some people. Uh, what's the point of making your movie if you're not going to show it to some people, right? So we want to take it around and show some people. And um, uh, crossing my fingers that you know, if we get to go through a couple of film festivals, if we, I don't care if we win anything, but if we just get played at a film festival, we get to go to those film festivals and meet other filmmakers, get involved with other filmmakers, and find out what they're doing. And anytime you find somebody one step up the ladder from you, you just grab onto their coattails, get their advice, you know, and, and ride along. So I would love to go to the next level. I would like to go to a place that has, um, that has some, some opportunities for me professionally and that hopefully a film like this would take me there. But the thing is that you, have to, you can't forget that Spartanburg is the place where you got the opportunity to make that. And maybe, maybe once you, when, when you're successful, you can come back and give that back to Spartanburg. I hope to represent Spartanburg's filmmaking community uh, outside. And people are like, where did this movie come from? It's pretty interesting. I don't know if I've seen anything like this before. And then I would be like, it's from Spartanburg, South Carolina. And then they would say, the what? And I would say, oh, you haven't heard. The upstate of South Carolina has an incredible filmmaking community. You should really check it out. You should visit and try some of our local brews and local eats. That's how I make movies. All you need is a camera and a bottle of beer to make a movie. Godard said all you need is a woman and a gun. I say you're going to need the camera, and you're going to need a six-pack. And the great thing about six-packs is they double as props and as refreshments. <laughs> no matter how much you love or hate, and I think that's a love-hate relationship for most people, uh, social media uh, names that we won't specifically identify, um, any sort of blog, social media, personal, um, net, social networking uh, pages are an invaluable tool to reach out to other people to make your film, to reach out to other people to help finance your film, to, um, to, to get people's interest built up in your film. Um, I don't know what I would do without it. The only, there have been moments in the last couple of years where the only reason I haven't just become a total troglodyte and shut myself off from social networking sites is because I'm like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta keep promoting my film. I have to be on there because that's where everybody is. That's where the people are. It's like a big community bulletin board, you know? So you post something up and then you say like, we're shooting this weekend, we need extras, we need crew, whatever. People will respond, especially if you offer them food. But you, you know, you, you, tell, you, you tell people about your project there and, um, and when you're done, you're gonna have a screening or you're trying to you know, raise money for your next project, you start promoting it on there all over again. Our, our blog keeps the people who already invested in our project, you know, it's been a, long, a lot longer, it's taken a lot longer to make this film than we thought it was going to, so the blog and social networking sites give us the opportunity to connect with them without having to reassure each of them individually, yep, we're still making that movie, it's still coming, and we'll show them, like, here's what we've been shooting, here's pictures, here's a write-up, like, they can see so many things, and if, if we had more time, I would love to have, to show people video, you know, like, show them more video of what's, of what's happening behind the scenes and that kind of thing. Um, it's fascinating to like to be partially. We don't want to give things away about the movie, but we're like our process is very transparent. So we say like, oh, here's what we did, and this is the problem we encountered, and you know um, we screwed this up, but this was a lot of fun, you know, and that kind of thing. The most difficult thing is scheduling people and competing with other people's schedules because uh, going back to the analogy to the to the pro sports and college sports analogy or whatever um, 
people who pe people who make it their life's their life's work and who are getting paid professionally and they're getting paid for certain amount. Yes, you can't get them to pull over time without a little bit of a hassle, but they're there for the time they're supposed to be because it's their job. When you're making an independent film, you're counting on those people to have that same enthusiasm that you have and to have that same vision that you have and to come out and help you make that project. Good friends, good no good networking, um, having good contacts with other people in the community is crucial because in independent filmmaking more so than than Hollywood filmmaking, um, reliability is and availability trump talent in many circumstances. It's awesome if you find somebody who's reliable, enthusiastic, and talented, and that has happened to us more times than I can count, and it's really awesome that it has. Um, but if those people can't show up for a shoot, or if they don't show up for a shoot, then what are you going to do? You know, if somebody wanted to get involved with film. And there's a lot of people, maybe you've shot some things when growing up you've, you know, played around the camera a little bit, maybe you've done a little editing, or maybe you've never touched it before and it just seems like a really cool thing to get into. Find people who are already working on projects in the area. They're hiding, they're, try they're not trying to hide, but they are. Seek them out, look online, look on the social networking sites, contact local arts groups, Hubbub, uh, the Chapman Cultural Center, uh, especially universities catch wind of things. There are film professors at all the major universities in the upstate and in Spartanburg in particular we have a lot of universities all clustered into one place and they all know artists. They all know filmmakers who are making projects. Get involved. Find classes and watch movies. By all means, please watch movies. Watch movies that you would never watch under any other circumstances. Watch a movie that looks like nothing you've seen before and sounds like nothing you've seen before. And find out what kind of a range of things people can do with film. Because when I first wanted to start making films, I had a very specific and narrow idea of what films were. And I just thought that they were cool and I wanted to find out more about them. If you end up a few years down the road and you've explored what film is more, you may like it more, you may like it less. The reason there's so few directors, I, th I, and I guess it's just because it's been that way for so long that it's very difficult to change that. You know, it's a slow moving industry. It's a slow moving industry. But there are women involved in, in many other parts of production, but those parts tend to be invisible. And there are all, types, all types of people, all sorts of genders and races and cultures and religions and whatever, in all sorts of different positions in filmmaking and, um, at least there's that. I mean, I think that's really good. There's like all sorts of people are involved. You shouldn't feel discouraged. I mean, if that's what's happening, the director, directors are directors and actors, get the spotlight on films, and really they're they can be overrated positions. Don't get me wrong. Directors and actors are both very critical parts of the filmmaking process for obvious reasons. It's very obvious why they have to be there. The person who's in charge, the person who's in front of the camera. You don't have a movie without them, really. Um, you, you can, but people don't like to watch those as much. Those movies make more money when there's people in front of the camera. So um, I guess just understand that all types of people are welcome on a film set and have a lot to lend. Hollywood's stuck. Hollywood is a, is a slow-moving beast of a machine. It's old, it's rusting, and it's a slow-moving beast. If you're a female and you want to be a, a director, I think independent filmmaking offers you that, that opportunity. Independent filmmaking is a uh, independent filmmaking is the people's filmmaking. Independent filmmaking is this free terrain, and and, it, and you know, uh, you get out and run around with a camera, and you made a movie. You know, find something compelling. Find your find your voice. Um, find a way to say something that somebody else hasn't said. I think that it's bizarre that there aren't more female directors because the director does have a lot of control over the voice in a film. They make a lot of little tiny decisions that add up to a really big a really big overall impact and a big point. At the same time there's also some there's some male directors who have been very proactive in making the the female voice or the female gaze uh, as it's called in film studies more prominent in their films even though they're male directors you know but I think that and maybe that maybe that's what has to be done is maybe maybe these these male directors have to be like look this is a kind of movie you know that you could make if you're interested in making films if you've ever even vaguely considered making films make one 
get a camera, make one. If you're at a university, you can rent one from the university. Uh, if you have a friend with a movie camera, if you have an iPhone, embrace new technology. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't use this piece of equipment or that piece of equipment or that you need to do it perfectly because when you start making it, you're going to gain an appreciation for what it takes to make a film. You're going to learn something. You're going to do something that you've never done before. And anytime you do something that you've never done before, I think it's a, it's a valuable experience in life. There's so many different things that you can do in life. And making a film is an incredible and rewarding and difficult experience. All of your little failures are this staircase towards success. So the more films you, you're not going to get good at something if you don't do it a lot. So live it. Make movies.